What would happen if the A350 and the 777X, two icons of the modern sky, receive new variants that are larger, fly farther, and perform more powerfully than ever before? For most people, that might sound impossible. But Emirates, one of the giants of the aviation world, has just expressed that very desire. And you know what's even more surprising? One manufacturer decided to answer that demand. If it becomes reality, the race to push technological limits and to surpass every existing standard could reignite, forcing the entire wide-body aircraft industry to rewrite the rules. So, who will take this bold move and why? Let's find out. Emirates is the world's largest operator of the Airbus A380 with a massive fleet that has become the backbone of its global connectivity model centered around Dubai International Airport DXB. In its standard configuration, accommodating 484 passengers, the A380 delivers a level of passenger carrying efficiency per flight unmatched by any aircraft in service today, particularly on ultra-high density routes. However, with the end of the A380's production, Emirates now faces a significant capacity gap. Sir Tim Clark has emphasized the urgent need for a wide-body aircraft capable of carrying even more passengers to fill this void. The core issue is not only about sustaining revenue growth, but also closely tied to slot limitations at major global hubs such as London Heathrow, LHR, and DXB itself. At these airports, obtaining additional takeoff and landing slots is nearly impossible. As a result, the only viable way to expand capacity is to carry more passengers on each existing flight. Therefore, the Gulf carrier has been investing heavily in refurbishment programs to extend the lifespan of its A380 fleet, planning to operate the aircraft at least until 2041. This strategy reflects the airline's steadfast belief in the continued need for high-capacity, long-haul travel. Yet Clark also acknowledges the major challenges of maintaining an aging fleet, particularly in engine support and spare parts availability. He was quoted by Aerotelegraph as saying, the supply chain has to work. Rolls-Royce and Engine Alliance must continue cooperating to ensure the A380 keeps flying. It will be difficult, but our plan is to keep the A380 in service. This dependency further reinforces the argument that a new, more modern successor is ultimately inevitable in the long term. One of the leading aircraft that Clark has called for the development of a new variant is the A35. Tim Clark's call to Airbus is a strategic move aimed at triggering innovation from the European manufacturer in the segment they once pioneered. Clark's objective is clear, to create a stretched version of the A350 family to inherit the legacy of the A380. Although Airbus currently offers the A350-1000 as its largest twin-engine jet, according to Clark, this aircraft is still too small to be a worthy successor. Specifically, the difference in capacity between the A380 and the A350-1000 is the core factor in Emirates' argument. The A350-1000 carries around 350 passengers in the common three-class configuration, while Emirates' A380 is configured for 484 seats or even more in some variants. This gap of 134 seats is a serious operational economic challenge for Emirates. For instance, on ultra-high density routes such as Dubai-London Heathrow or Dubai-Sydney, where flight frequency is strictly limited due to slot restrictions, every additional seat per flight directly translates into revenue and profit. A gap of 134 seats means that to compensate for the capacity of a single A380, Emirates would need to operate nearly half an additional A351,000 flight, something impossible in a slot-saturated environment. This is the fundamental reason behind Clark's emphasis that the airline needs an aircraft capable of carrying more passengers without increasing flight frequency. Therefore, maximizing slot utilization is the top priority, and only an aircraft with a greater capacity than the current Variant 1000 can achieve that. Clark's intentions are clear enough that, with the blunt statement, we need something bigger, he has laid out a list of significant technical improvements for Airbus that go beyond simply stretching the fuselage. He believes the maker should pursue a longer version of the A350, often referred to as the A350-2000 or A350 stretch, with architectural changes across three main areas. First, an enhanced wing is a prerequisite. A longer aircraft will be significantly heavier and have a higher maximum takeoff weight, MTOW. To maintain flight performance and takeoff capability, the current wing of the version 1000 may not be sufficient. A new wing would require a larger wingspan or an optimized aerodynamic design to support the increased load, 
while maintaining the outstanding fuel efficiency characteristics of the A350 family. This could involve structural reinforcement, increased wing strength, and possibly refined high-lift devices to handle greater loads at low speeds. Next, the use of lighter composite structures is crucial. This aircraft is already known for its high composite material ratio, over 50% of its structure, but a stretched variant must further maximize empty weight reduction. By leveraging even more advanced carbon fiber and composite materials in the fuselage and wings, Airbus can ensure that the increase in size does not lead to a significant deterioration in fuel efficiency, thereby maintaining its advantage in cost per available seat mile compared to the A380. The goal is to carry more passengers without significantly increasing fuel costs. Finally, the requirement for modern engines is indispensable. To power a larger and heavier airframe, the current Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 engines may not provide sufficient thrust without significantly compromising performance or increasing maintenance costs. Clark is indirectly urging engine partners like Rolls-Royce to develop an Ultra Trent version or a next-generation engine with thrust levels approaching or exceeding 100,000 pounds to compete with the GE9X engines on Boeing's 777X. This cooperation is critical, as without a new engine, the stretched aircraft would not be able to achieve the desired range and fuel efficiency. These detailed technical requirements have sparked major internal discussions within Airbus. In fact, Tim Clark's latest statements reflect Emirates' long-standing view that a new generation of high-capacity jets is essential to meet future passenger demand. However, what's truly noteworthy is Airbus's response to this call. The European maker CEO Guillaume Fauri has hinted at a potential natural evolution of the A350 family, implying that a stretched version is a technically and commercially reasonable possibility in the future. However, he also emphasized that the development of a longer variant, commonly referred to as the A350-2000 or A350 stretch, is unlikely to happen before the 2030s. The reason for this hesitation lies in Airbus's current program priorities and the enormous financial barriers to aircraft development. Developing a stretch variant could require R&D costs amounting to several billion dollars. The maker is currently channeling its technical and financial resources into projects deemed more urgent for a broader and more stable global market, the A350F freighter, to compete in the booming cargo market, and the expansion of the narrow body line with the A22500, aimed at capturing the larger regional jet market to secure steady revenue. Moreover, developing an A350 stretch, though promising, risks being seen as a niche program serving primarily Emirates exclusive demand. The manufacturer must carefully consider whether this carrier is willing to commit to a large enough order to offset the R&D costs. It may not be until the 2030s, when the current program stabilize, that the maker can consider making the new variant its next major development focus. A longer A350 variant would allow Airbus to compete more directly and aggressively with its biggest rival, Boeing, and the 777X in both range and capacity, reshaping the battle in the high-performance wide-body segment instead of being forced to cede the super-large twinjet category to Boeing. But in the end, can the Airbus's new variant truly stand against the 777X, a jet that is already superior, even without a new variant? It's hard to conclude now, but still, even for Boeing, Developing a new variant comes with its own set of challenges. Similar to the A350, although Boeing's largest twin-engine jet, currently under development, the 777-9, offers around 346 seats in a typical three-class configuration, it still falls far short of the A380's 484-seat capacity, leaving Emirates with a gap of roughly 140 passengers. Just as with Airbus, President Tim Clark emphasized that to maintain performance and profitability on high-density routes such as Dubai-London and Dubai-Sydney, the U.S. aerospace giant must provide a higher-capacity wide-body solution, one that allows Emirates to grow its passenger volume without increasing flight frequency, a crucial economic strategy in today's slot-saturated airport environment. This call has elevated the competition between the A350 and the 777X to a whole new level. If Boeing responds with a stretched variant, possibly a 777-10, it could surpass any stretched A350 model its rival might introduce, thereby reinforcing its position as the maker of the largest twin-engine airliner ever built. However, this possibility also presents the U.S. maker with a serious dilemma. On one hand, the company must weigh the pursuit of potential orders for this ultra-large version. On the other, it faces dual challenges in finance and program development. 
The current 777X program has already suffered significant delays due to complex issues related to certification and engine testing, forcing the company to concentrate its engineering and financial resources on bringing the baseline Dash 9 to market. So, allocating additional resources to a Dash 10 larger variant could help Boeing dominate the super-large twin-jet segment, but it also risks further delaying certification and stabilization of more commercially critical 777X models. Moreover, this battle compels the U.S. maker to manage R&D risks and prioritize resources strategically, all to meet the exclusive demands of a customer whose influence could ultimately shape the future of next-generation wide-body programs. Beyond the technical hurdles and program management challenges, the implications of Emirates' request extend far deeper, touching the very foundation of how the next generation of long-haul travel will be defined. Both Airbus and Boeing are now in an awkward situation. Their responses to this challenge could determine not only the fate of their respective wide-body lineups, but also the direction of global aviation strategy for decades to come. For Boeing, the development of a larger 777X variant represents both an opportunity and a gamble. The company is still recovering from a series of program delays and financial setbacks, from the prolonged certification of the 777X to the costly repercussions of the 737 MAX crisis. Launching a new version too early could stretch its resources thin and risk repeating the overextension that plagued previous projects. Yet standing still may be even riskier. If Airbus eventually delivers a stretched A350 variant that captures the market's attention, Boeing could lose dominance in the very category it helped define, the large twin-engine long-haul jet. On the other hand, for Airbus, answering Emirates' call means more than just producing a bigger A350. It would signal the company's willingness to re-engage in the high-capacity segment it once abandoned after the A380's discontinuation. A successful A350 stretch could restore Airbus's reputation as a bold innovator in long-range aviation, but if mishandled, it could drain R&D funding and jeopardize the success of other high-priority programs such as the A350F and A22500. The strategic dilemma is clear. Should Airbus chase prestige or preserve stability? Meanwhile, Emirates' influence cannot be underestimated. The airline's business model, built upon funneling massive passenger volumes through its Dubai hub, gives it a unique position to shape global aircraft development. Its push for ultra-large twin jets could redefine the post-A380 era, driving a return to higher capacity airframes optimized for slot-limited megahubs rather than fragmented point-to-point -point operations. If Emirates' vision prevails, the aviation industry may witness a renewed focus on efficiency through scale rather than diversification. In essence, this isn't merely a contest between the A350 and the 777X, it is a battle for the future philosophy of air travel, between evolutionary efficiency and revolutionary capacity, between the pursuit of incremental progress and the daring leap toward the next frontier of commercial aviation. So ultimately, will it be the A350-2000 or the 777-10? Let's discuss in the comments below. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next big moves in the aviation world by subscribing to our channel. Thank you and as always, wishing you safe and pleasant flights.